Animations run independently without stopping. You can use ActionScript to control when you want to stop an animation. Here we have our starting animation and our ending animation and you can see the starting animation keeps repeating itself. The ending animation we will have to restart it so we'll use the flash player menu and we'll rewind it and then we'll play it and you can see it just goes one time. We'll repeat that once more so you can see that. If we go back to the first one and we rewind it and then do play we can see it repeats over and over. So in the second one we just simply added some action script so that it only would play one time. Okay, let's take a look at the starting file. We'll get these off our stage and out of our way. And we'll open up the starting file. And we'll quickly save it under another name as a practice file. And I'll just call this practice and let's take a look at what we have. First of all, in the library we have one movie clip. It's called Red Square. I'll open it, double clicking the icon, and inside it just simply has at position 00, zero a rectangle shape uh, formed to be a square. If we go back to scene one, we can see on scene one, if I select the object on the first keyframe and we look at properties, we can see that it's the instance of Red Square the movie clip and we have a basic uh, motion tween and if we test this movie you can see it keeps playing over and over okay now let's put in our action script so we'll close this test movie and down on our timeline area we'll insert a layer now action scripts go inside of keyframes and one of the rules that we follow is just to create a separate layer for them. We'll name this layer actions and we will lock the layer. To get off on the right foot let's look at some basic rules we have for setting up action scripts on our timeline. Uh, the first one is to always use one layer uh, in any timeline, because we'll be able to put action scripts inside of our movie clips, you should just try to stick to one layer for your action scripts. It makes it easier to find them and um, avoids duplications. Uh, give it a name that we know it's action scripts, action script or actions or some abbreviations such as AS. Uh, put no assets on the layer. Our rule of thumb is to keep the actions layer free of assets so that we do not mix up the keyframes that have assets such as animations on it with the actual actions. Lock the layer that will help us prevent putting assets on there. However, we'll still be able to edit the action script with the locked layer. And always make it the top or the first layer in your timeline so it's easy to find. It also signals anyone looking at that timeline that that is an action script uh, timeline. Okay, now we're going to add our action script, and what we'll do is, since action script goes on a keyframe, and we need the action on the last frame to stop the animation, we'll go to frame 30 on the actions layer, and we will right mouse click and say insert a keyframe, and then we'll open up the actions window. Uh, you can use a shortcut key, the main menu. If you right mouse click over the keyframe, just choose actions, and this is your actions window. You want to keep <coughs> script assist mode off. This is a button up in the top right corner, on and then off. It was very useful back in Action Script 2 days for basic timeline animations when Action Script 2 was the main version. But now we leave it off and we learn to type in the actions, all lowercase letters, the word stop, open parentheses, close parentheses, and a semicolon. We need to match the actual capitalization of our actions and all action lines end with a semicolon optionally but then again that's a rule of thumb that we put in and do anyway because of consistency. At this point we're done we can test our movie right from this point and you can see it just plays one time. If you take a look at the timeline you'll notice that the keyframe has the letter A stored in it that's to indicate to you that there's some actions on that keyframe. So when you're looking at your movie 
and you're looking for your actions, you'll look at the first layer and it should say actions if there are any. And you'll look at the keyframes that have the letter A in them. And you open up your actions window, I'll use the shortcut key. And then you'll see the actions. You can also look at the navigation panel in the bottom right corner of the actions frame. Sometimes this is closed and you need to open it or somehow you may have actually reduced it in size. And it will show you the frames that have actions on them and you can click on those to bring the actions up in the editing window. Okay, save your movie. Keep all your actions on one layer for each timeline. It will make it a lot easier for you to find the actions and maintain them and now you're on your way to controlling your animations with ActionScript.